this is the whole lineup, and uh, this is the whole shelf that you got here of yes. Fauna. My favorite. Your favorite. So your whole store is uh, basically you are dog fooding, right? Yep. I'm running everything on Fauna. The only thing I don't use Fauna for is the salt for the fish system, just because it's unnecessary. Um, but pretty much everything else. Um, I've tried so many brands. <laughs> I've been in the hobby since I was nine. So 16 years of not having money, getting the cheapest stuff, to having some money, getting a little better, to just trying every product. And honestly, quality outmatches everything for me. Yeah, I think they've really been stepping up as well because I remember Fauna when they just, you know, when I got introduced to it, it was like 10 years ago and the packaging was different, but then yeah, they- really modernized and changed everything yeah, quite a bit. Really looking good. So this is the lineup and this is all about coral nutrition and coloration. So maybe let's start uh, either way. Um, so we'll start with trace elements just because yeah. it's pretty straightforward and quick. Um, you know, we have so many corals in the store that, you know, you could probably stock a 5,000 gallon tank with uh, and trace elements are the biggest thing that we have to deal with constantly dosing, trying to keep them stable. Um, and the one way we deal with that is we'll do uh, a color element set from Fauna. So yep. it's something you normally dose once a week, you know, two or three mils for every 26 gallons. We dose an outrageous amount of it just because of the amount of corals we have. Mm -hmm. uh, but this covers kind of all your grounds. They market it towards like this bottle will have the elements that are associated with more red colors, the, the greens, the blues. They try to kind of make it more simple for the, the consumer. Yep. Uh, but long story short, they cover all your bases for what you would generally need. Uh, but we're not a, a regular general need type situation. So we have a lot more things going on than what someone would in their home aquarium. Yes. So we're dosing a lot more trace elements. Um, so on top of the color element set, we're using a product called organic. Organic. So it's an all-in-one organically bound trace element kind of solution. Uh, I find it's more catered towards a lot of the SPS. Um, I started using, SPS or? Yeah, okay. the organic is, is generally for the SPS. Okay. Uh, it's just the trace elements are, are easier for them to kind of absorb and, and consume in that sense. So that's what we do for trace. Um, and then occasionally after an ICP, we might adjust an individual element. We have all the individual elements from Fauna if needed, but we try not to do, you know, too much mad scientist on that end. Yeah, they, I'm, I'm afraid to even just uh, yeah, there's many look at that. There. But would you say that if you're sticking more or less with the kind of what's on the bottles and just to scale up, the proportions and everything else fit nicely? Yeah, nine out of 10 times, that's all a customer will need. Yep. There might be one, maybe two elements that are just significantly lower for some mm -hmm. reason. Maybe their Chato mm -hmm. is absorbing it or there's something in their tank. Yep. Uh, so maybe you'll you'll get one specific bottle to adjust only after getting an ICP test. Yep. Never address, adjust your trace elements without doing an ICP No, because you don't know what's going on in your tank. <clears throat> and uh, how do we do an ICP? We uh, come to your store yes. and just buy it? So there's two types yeah. of ICP tests. There's the regular reef ICP, yep. which is going to test all your trace elements. Um, so like this is the, the one we do every two weeks. I wouldn't recommend a customer do it that often, but um, the more frequent, the better. So this one covers all your bases for your trace elements. So when you purchase it and you bring it back to us, we ship it for free every single week. So you don't have to worry about doing any of that. And, and I can attest to that because um, I just usually drop it off on a Sunday and usually within a week, just eight days, uh, I get an email from Fauna saying, you know, these are your results. They also have the ICP total, which is a very in-depth analysis. It yep. does an additional 12 elements. You're actually going to get a real ALK reading, a real nitrate reading, mm -hmm. which is really good to kind of test what you're getting results yes. from your tanks. Yes. And then very importantly, people overlook your RO water. That's correct. So, so many people tell yes. me, oh, my yes. water reads zero TDS, it's fine. I'm like, send in a sample and there's zinc in their water, there's Ooh. aluminum getting through, there's tons of silicates getting through, but a dinky old TDS meter can't pick that up. A lab grade test can. So <laughs> this one's a little bit more money. It's yep. it's only about 15 more dollars, maybe 20, um, but it covers everything like super, super in depth. So I recommend one of these, I'd say every three months in comparison to yeah. more frequent do a regular ICP. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So um, keep an eye on RO and RO, from what I understand, uh, it will change even throughout the year because your municipality may do funky stuff. Oh, around. Absolutely. When we get lots of rain, our yeah. tap water is going to have more chemicals in it because yeah. we need to treat more water that's going through the sewers. Um, so things change all the time. So people overlook something very small that could be affecting, you know, why aren't my polyps looking as good? Why aren't my colors as good this week? Whatever the case may be. But we really, like our philosophy is purity. 
our water, our salt, anything we add has to be as pure as possible. Yep. And Fauna hits the nail on the head every single time. And speaking of ICPs, uh, right now, while, while we still have the salt, yep. you get a free ICP test with every bucket you buy. Oh, well, there that's you go. The promo, which is, that's 35 bucks right there for every bucket of salt you buy. I like it. Um, so basically the trace and just uh, once again, so these are the different kind of components. So different combinations of uh, trace elements and then the organic. What exactly would that kind of uh, add to this? It's, it's more of like a, a specialty type product. I don't recommend it for everybody. Yeah. For more of the people with a lot of more acros in the tank, SPS more dominant I gotcha. tank, we recommend it. The consumption is generally higher on those corals. So a really good comparison would be these three to something like, let's say Red Seas Trace Colors, which is a yes. four bottle set, uh, yep. you know, definitely not as high quality, but they mm. really break it down where you can dose this product on its own. Red Sea, they only tell you how to dose it based on their calcium. Uh, so okay. it, it kind of defeats the purpose. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I have trace element in my alkaline calcium already, but that's only replacing what the skeleton's absorbing. It's not considering what the tissues are absorbing yeah. in the coral. Makes sense. So it's a really easy set to, to deal with. Super, super simple. Okay, and moving on to food. Yes, this is, uh, I say, right now the most important thing that's keeping all of our non-SPS corals alive. Because we have such low nutrients, we have to feed a lot to keep these guys happy and healthy. Okay, and sorry, when you say non-SPS, so uh, SPS you would think a little bit differently? Yeah, because than... SPS, um, they thrive in very low nutrient environments. Ah, okay. So they're also getting majority of their uh, energy from light. Yes. Most of it. A lot of the other corals have a larger digestive system. They need particle, like particle matter, like foods eat, plankton, meaty things. So we go over, I'll go over a few things with you guys. We have a couple like specialty foods for specific types of corals. Yep. Um, and then I'll tell you what I'm doing as a general type feeding. And uh, just for somebody who's a little bit new to the hobby, the SPS is small, stony, Corals or sto small stony polyps? Small polyp stony corals. Small so polyps. all the branches, what you see, the stuff yeah. that doesn't really move. Yeah. Um, so they have a very small polyp, this large is... skeletal structure. These are all the SPS yes. corals over My here. Favorite, so. But Sam, I'm with you on this one, especially when they are so colorful. Oh yeah. And then when we talk about LPS, uh, basically that's what large, large polyp stony corals. So everyone thinks hammer corals, torches, rock spuns, they think they're softies because they're moving and they're yeah. so soft, but they have a big skeleton in there. Yes. So anything with the skeleton is a hard coral. So large polyp stony, um, lots of tissue, which yep. is the polyp. Um, there's so many types. All the brains, all, all those things are all large polyp stonies. So we've covered uh, the LPS and SPS, and then for softies, this zoanthid, for example, would be uh, would consider it to be softie, correct? Uh, that's actually a, a gani, believe it or not. Would, would the one in the back? Yeah, that's a gani. No, it looks just like a large like pally or zoa. I was that's just going to say yes. Uh, but we do have zoas and leathers in the store. They're softies, no skeletons at all. Um, okay, second try. Uh, the, that uh, cloth polyps in the yes. back there that's moving, that's, an, uh, LP, uh, that's a softie. Yes, so no skeleton, <laughs> just, just tissue. With SPS, LPS and softies, moving back to the food. Yes, so the main thing we do and the main thing we recommend for absolutely everybody yeah. uh, is these two bottles right here. So one of them is amino acids, which is not really like a food, it's more of a supplement, but mm -hmm. I still kind of add it to your feeding regimen because the corals do need it. Yep. So without amino acids, the corals cannot repair or grow their tissue very well. Yep. It's something that should go in every single day, which seems crazy, but everything in your tank's using it. Your fish are also absorbing it, all the algae in your tank's absorbing it, your skimmer's removing it, and if you don't put it in every day, the corals don't have a constant source of it. Gotcha. So you want a very good quality, pure amino acid. There's a couple different ones on the market. I find fun of the best price for the best quality. Um, and it, it doesn't raise your nutrients much at all because it's so concentrated, you don't need a lot of it. So this guy goes in every single day. Um, and then Min S is a very, very special food. Um, mm -hmm. It's a blend of mollusks and crustaceans. There's also a little bit of trace elements and some other things in there. But this is like magic, liquid magic. Also it, has smells like uh, oh magic. So. It's uh, it's like the toilet of the ocean type yes. situation. Yes, it, exactly. It is, so. It's very bad, but that is a general coral food. Every type of coral will, will uh, benefit from it. It's super thick. And when we talk concentrated, I don't yep. think there's anything on the market that is anywhere near concentrated to it. Yep. You need point zero point three. I repeat, zero point yes. three mils for every 66 gallons of tank water. So which is insane. It's like eight drops. 
of, yep. of food. So that, that will yeah. last you forever. Right? Yeah, I use a lot of it because yeah. our nutrients are so low. Like when, when I told even the distributor, when I ordered the one liter size, he's like, why do you order the one liter? <laughs> and I'm like, well, one, it looks nice on the shelf, which it does. Yes. And I say, I go through a bottle about every five months. He's like, what? I've been using my last bottle for two years. And he has a thousand gallon system just like me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, every coral, every system has different needs. So we do feed a lot of it. But in a regular situation where you're feeding such a small amount, I doubt you'll see any nitrate or phosphate spikes like you would if you did refroids or any other coral food you see on the market because you need so little of it to go into the, into the water. And uh, for folks that are uh, watching this, um, I just want to point out that while we're talking fauna and obviously we can see that uh, Demo is quite partial uh, to that, um, technically you could use other aminos, uh, other brands and... Uh, I have uh, Red, Red Sea AV Plus. Yeah, which is it's it's a it's an okay alternative. Um, you know, I have it here to show customers. A lot of people use it; it's very popular. But I just say it as it is. You need to use a lot more of it. Yeah, it ends up being four times more expensive. But you know what's really awesome about it? It's green. It is the color. Yeah, yeah it, it, it actually it makes you green. feel that you are doing something amazing. Yeah, to your it is a cool product. It will work. So. Uh, some people do experience some nutrient spikes with it, so you have yeah. to be cautious. I yep. also have, uh, which I'm sold out right now, Polyp Lab sells one. Yes. It's called uh, Polyp Lab Colors 200%. I've used that and actually it was very successful. I started the so. store with it. Uh, mm. It was just a little harder to get and there'd be times where I was out of it, like right now, yeah. uh, and I need amino acids. So I had to switch to something more reliable as far as something I can get. But that's that's my, my next best choice. It's okay. super concentrated yeah. and it's pretty inexpensive for how much you need to use. So, so far we've covered the traces and again, you could do other traces, Red Sea, whatever. Uh, but in this case, we're, you're recommending uh, fauna. Yep. Uh, the next one is the aminos and some sort of a liquid uh, food yep. for corals to uptake. And then what do we have here? So this is more what I call like a specialty food. So yes. we use them in specific situations. We'll start mm. from this end. So LPS color pellets. Yes. Uh, any type of large open mouth coral. Let's actually show yeah. what they look like. So, so like scullies is a perfect yep. example. Uh, all the welsos on the sand bed, all these guys, they will benefit from like a large meaty food and a pellet is engineered to be packed with nutrition. Mm -hmm. So this is what we'll do. Uh, we feed so much. So I only do pellets maybe once every two weeks. Yep. Uh, most of my customers who use them will feed them out once a week, a uh, very small amount, one or two uh, little pellets for every mouth of the coral and they'll close up and just digest it. And these corals need more meaty foods. They need, they need more of that stuff in their diet. So that covers their grounds. So you basically open it up. Do you pre-soak it or you just- I only soak it because it's easier to feed all these corals with a yeah. turkey baster. So I see. there's no need to actually so soak it at home, yep. um, but whatever method is easier for you because feeding pellets is difficult to coral. So if you can make it easier for yourself, I would definitely do that. And usually uh, uh, the shrimp is gonna also compete and maybe some fish. Yeah, so I always feed so. my fish first. I feed them heavy before I feed any of my corals pellets because nice. I'm distracted yep. and my corals get to eat. All right, so the LPS pellets, yes. The next thing is coral dust, which is specific food for three types of corals. Um, I use it mainly for my ganis because we farm a lot of ganis. Yep. So it's made for ganopora, yep. it's made for recordia and zoanthids. Okay. So I'll target feed this maybe once a week um, because again, I'm feeding so heavily on other things. Yep. Sometimes we'll go a couple weeks without it, but it's just a specialty food made for them. Um, you know, I don't recommend it to everybody. If I have customers, you know, their ganis aren't doing too well, they're not growing too well, I tell them try it. If we have samples in the store, I'll give them a free sample uh, and people really, really love it. But I find for some reason, whatever is in this, whatever it's made of, it's targeted towards those type of corals, yep. I do a lot better with it. You said multiple types of uh, coral. So once again, it's what, uh, goni? Uh, goni, zoas, and uh, recordias, like mushrooms. Recordias. So basically, and what does it look like? It's a little it's a bit powder. more... Uh, it's a powder. I don't think I have a small one opened. I might have a massive one in the back because you yep. get large amounts for store use. Yeah, you've, you've got the commercial level. Okay, and then... And this is kind of similar to Mines in the sense that it's a general coral food. Yes. Uh, this is a powdered form. So this is um, a bacterial plankton food. Ooh. So, yeah, kind of freaky. It yeah. does not affect your nutrients at all. You <laughs> will not get a phosphate uh, reading from it. You will not get nitrate going up at all. Um, I use this kind of in place of what you would do, like refroids or any other type of powdered food. Mm -hmm. um, again, because I have to feed so much, I don't want you know these levels going through the roof. Uh, but this is for generally SPS, LPS, and it's also made for non-photosynthetic. Like we we're talking about those gorgonians we have. Yeah. 
So it's just a powder food. We'll mix it up and then we'll broadcast feed. Um, we recommend customers target feeding, but our tanks, again, they're so packed with coral, so much flow. We don't really need to target feed a lot of the corals. So if we were looking, and I know this is uh, this tank is connected to your whole system, mm -hmm. but how big is this aquarium? The display is 65 gallons. It's an 84 gallon system. Okay, so it's a 65 gallon Red Sea system. And if you were to suggest a regimen for uh, this system based on these elements, what would you do? How many times per week? What would be rough amounts? Um, I don't think we need to be exact, but let's Okay, so to. generally I go based on your nutrient levels. Some people yes. struggle with high nutrients, but if everything's good, let's say your nutrient export is fair, you yep. don't have any issues. Min S, I'd go by what they recommend every two days. Yep. I'd put in, for this size tank, would be about half a mil. It'd be really hard to measure anything. Yeah, so you need like a syringe to, to yeah, do that. A little or syringe. just like a few drops. Yes, when things. you buy the smaller size bottles, yeah. they come with little droppers. Nice. Uh, and it's like oh, 10 drops per mil or something, yep. whatever the math comes out to. Okay. Uh, and then amino acids every single day, mm -hmm. I would put no matter what, um, yep. directly into the display. It's half a mil for every 26 gallons, so about a mil and a half. Okay. Around that. Um, so those, I would say, as a must, no matter what. If I uh, were to just add, uh, my experience with aminos is uh, they work amazing, but you have to keep an eye on your nutrients because if you are your phosphates and nitrates are at zero, at least in my experience, I would get dinos every single time when I dose aminos. So you want them to be... Yeah, you um, got to be careful because like I said, aminos feeds algaes and other things yes. too. It's not just the corals. Every life organism uses amino acids. So you do have to be cautious of what's going on in your system. Like I wouldn't sit there and start dumping aminos if, if you have a dino bloom or you have tons of algae and other things already. Yep. Uh, we're assuming your system's healthy and things are stable. Phenomenal. All right, so those two, now moving on. Trace elements once a week. We dose them every Thursday. Um, mm. I mean, the amounts that we dose, it would probably be smart to put them on a dosing pump because yep. we're doing like 200 mils of each every week. Yep. But, uh, you know, I already have enough dosing pumps going on. So I do those every week. Um, straightforward and then organic is actually it's designed to be used with mines mm -hmm. they work together so if you're using mines you have to do a half dose of organic yes and this one i believe is half a mil for every 26 gallons as well and they recommend it daily i got so you i normally do it every two days just because i do it with my mines and yep. we're doing so many tricyclins already um, but that's really all we do for this tank we don't really do any of the specialty foods because they don't have a lot of corals that require more of that food so i i don't do it Mm -hmm. So it's not just something I throw at everybody. I really cater to every single customer's needs, what their tank needs. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, take all these products and they'll work for you. We want to make sure we're giving you something that's actually going to do something for you. So would you recommend first to start with what you just said in terms of the regimen? And then if somebody wants to then say, hey, my SPS needs a little bit of extra, I feel that, this is where you would direct yeah. them to for these foods? Yeah, absolutely. So we normally tell people like if there no one no one really comes to us with a tank this full of corals and say hey what do i do yep. at that point they normally know what they're doing um but if it's a newer customer and they have very few corals we cut all the doses way 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 back um you know most companies are giving you a dosage based on a full tank yes or, or somewhat full yes. tank so yes. a lot of people don't keep that in mind you know brand new tank they're sitting there putting a tablespoon of food when mm -hmm. they have three little frags so you know again that's where we'll sit and we'll tell customers we'll talk to them we know what they have we want to make sure that they're not going to just destroy the next three months of their <laughs> their reefing because they overdose something. So we go based on how many pearls you have. Well, and it's dependent on your lighting, right? Mm -hmm. So the stronger the light, the more, let's say, this will try to consume certain things. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, this 65 gallon, for example, this is the most stocked aquarium you know one can have. There's not a single inch that's just not covered with coral. And a lot of them are also corals that to your point, are have hard skeletons. So that means that they're going to be extra consuming a lot of trace elements and uh, calcium alkalinity. And yet somebody who's just starting out with the hobby, they'll have the same aquarium, same amount of live rock, but they'll have only, let's say, four or five corals, and you cannot treat the two of them equally. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's where we tell people, you know, we really ask what's happening before we say, take this and use it. Very nice. It doesn't work the same for everybody. Even if someone had the same tank at home, it might have different requirements. Well, um, the nice thing is that somebody can just walk over uh, to a store and while they pick up corals, they're also going to get some friendly advice. And um, you've given me uh, a lot of those advices and I've listened and uh, a lot of them have worked for me. So 
um, I think that's another very nice uh, service that you provide for the community. I try my best. Yeah. So, well, uh, thanks. And um, I think we've learned a lot. I'm really curious what uh, the folks uh, in the comments will uh, comment on. And maybe we've missed something or maybe somebody is doing something differently or they disagree. Uh, I think these are really interesting topics for further discussions. For sure. Dimo, uh, thank you for showing us around. It was a pleasure. I think we've learned something. Um, if you have any questions for Dimo and how he keeps his coral, please write them in the comments below and we'll make sure to cover them in the next few videos. It's always great having you, Dimitri. Thank you, guys.